This past winter has seen a threefold increase in homeless deaths countywide, with a total of 10 this year in the first two months, compared to last year's three homeless deaths in the same time period. In response, the city of Eureka has tried its first overnight extreme weather warming center, hoping to prevent additional weather-related deaths among Eureka's unsheltered population. I sat down with Commander LaFrance from the Eureka Police Department's Community Safety Engagement Team and Jacob Rosen, the mastermind behind the city's new crisis alternative response of Eureka. In mid-March, the city of Eureka decided to open the warming center for extreme weather nights on an as-needed basis, prompted by alerts received from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, according to Commander LaFrance. Eureka's temporary extreme weather overnight warming center opened its door six nights in the two weeks of the latter part of March and sheltered a total of 48 people among them. Rosen and LaFrance explained that the outreach efforts are served with a healthy dose of humanity but are always facing challenges. Um, because the, the city has really taken the stance that like this is in, ha having these types of deaths is not acceptable and, and we want to change that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really fortunate and, and happy to be partnering with, with Lifehouse, um, the, the church that we've been, been that has been hosting this. Right. Um, you know, Free Meal has kicked in and helped both being a drop off and a pickup location. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really mm -hmm. uh, a nice example of the community coming together with, you know, different nonprofits and, you know, government agencies and, yeah. um, you know, really kind of coming together and, and helping make this not happen again. Because it's it's uh, it's tragic, and mm -hmm. and it you know I think if we come together as a community, we can find solutions so that it doesn't happen again. It takes a village. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, I think a lot of it just comes down to having that human connection with the person, right? I mean, uh -huh. talk, coming up to them and, and just talking with them. Um, I mean, a lot of the folks I was asking, hey, do you have somewhere warm to go tonight? Uh -huh. um, and just starting that conversation, because once you have that conversation, you know. It, Either A, it's going to lead to them wanting the service, or B, it's going to lead to them telling you what else they need. As a follow-up to the tense trash and trauma reporting from January, I began to review autopsy reports from the Eureka area, hoping to determine if the weather was a factor in these transient deaths, and if so, to what degree. In reviewing some of these autopsy reports collected from the coroner's office, a 33-year-old man was found deceased outside a church on a night with heavy rain and lower temperatures than usual. Raymond Chagola died as he laid under a set of stairs at the rear of the church, out of sight but not out of the elements. Cause of death was determined to be a heart attack complicated by hypothermia. It was also noted that mental illness may have been a factor in the circumstance of his death. In addition to asking about the new warming center and how that was offered to unsheltered community members, I wanted to know what Eureka's CSET and care coordinators thought about the availability of alternative shelter spaces in regard to this particularly tragic and preventable death. I've been picking up autopsy reports, um, not my favorite thing to do, but um, in, in looking at this issue, you know, and so recently um, reviewed one of a 33-year-old man who did pass away outdoors. Um, and hypothermic was, was one term used. And then also um, cardiac arrest issues were also noted there. Toxicology was clean. And so, um, you know, it just seems like this man didn't, didn't have shelter. And that was... The, the reason. I think the poor part, I, you sent me the photo of the of the copy of the... Yeah. So yeah, um, so if you look at the secondary part of that, what was the, remember the sec, what the secondary part of that mm -hmm. said? Mm -hmm. um, so obviously there's some, there some mental health issues going on as well. Um, yeah. And so that's the challenge we have is that, um, as you said, the to uh, you, you said that you read the toxicology was clean, so nothing yeah. at all. Right. And so we have to, when we, anytime we look at these issues, we have to, you know, why, what, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. And so is it, what, what in the system didn't work? Right. So was it a housing issue? Was it a mental health issue? Mm -hmm. um, was the person provided, uh, being provided appropriate services? Were they asking for services? Mm -hmm. If they were, were they being provided services that were appropriate? Um, were they being dismissed from services? Um, if they're you know, they looking for housing, whatever it is, yeah. what, what caused this individual to be outside? Mm -hmm. um, right. And who likely wasn't, didn't have the cognition to recognize, hey, 
this is the this is the weather conditions, and mm -hmm. now you have a 33 year old dying of hypothermia, pro possibly caused by a heart attack. Yeah. That's greatly troubling to me. Yeah. Um, that we have these folks in the street that he couldn't advocate for himself, and I mean, likely I don't I don't I don't know the individual, um, but yet here we are with an individual who has value, and someone is someone's child, and uh, someone cares about. And, that's just the, the challenge we have. But from when I look at it, mm -hmm. you know, where, where in the system can we can we make it better to improve it to to stop this from happening? Yeah. Um, but we'd have to probably dig in deeper and see exactly what what led where. Mm -hmm. um, you know, was he was he looking for services or not? Mm -hmm. um, what happened? When we looked at the services. Um, it really it, it's uh, it's not right. Overall, the somewhat experimental temporary overnight shelter functioned as a pilot program for the city according to LaFrance and Rosen, in hopes that when needed in an emergency like an extreme weather event or a natural disaster, that the program would run smoothly. In the context of the increased transient deaths this past winter, being able to shelter an additional 48 people out of the possibly hundreds of homeless on the streets of Eureka on any given night, this was a success for community members who would have otherwise been left to the elements. This is Ryan Hudson with a tense trash and trauma update for Headline Humboldt.